Hey yo, what up people, I'm Low Heat and in this video I'm gonna be showing you my method of warping tracks in Ableton Live for the purpose of using them for sampling, for DJ sets, for remixing and so on. I'll show you the difference between a track that was made on a computer or a sequencer which has a steady BPM and a track with live drums where the BPM fluctuates all the time. So thanks everybody for tuning in and let's get right into it and see how it works. So warping is essentially what's known as time stretch, which basically allows us to play a piece of audio in sync with our project's BPM and the pitch of the audio doesn't change as we change the tempo and vice versa, transposing the audio doesn't change the BPM. So first of all, let's set our warping preferences. We go to our preferences window to the record warp launch tab. So the very idea of preferences is that we can set them as we prefer, but here's my recommendation. So I'd recommend that we set the loop warp short samples to auto. Ableton is pretty good at warping well cropped loops correctly, meaning loops that are an exact number of bars, 1, 2, 4, 8, etc. without silence or odd lengths. Such loops will be synced to our project's BPM automatically. As far as the auto warp long samples option is concerned, I would suggest that you set it to off. Over the years, Ableton has become better at warping long samples, which are in most cases whole songs. Uh, but it's still not perfect and you need to be able to do it manually if the automatic method doesn't work correctly for the particular track that you want to warp. Beats as default warping mode is fine for now. So in warping our tracks, there are two fundamental things that we need to figure out. The BPM of the track and where the first beat of the track is. So we're gonna start with a track by Moot, which is a dub producer from the Netherlands. And this track has a steady BPM, so it's gonna be pretty easy to warp. So how do we find the BPM? Uh, a lot of people prefer to look it up online, but what if this info isn't available? Or uh, if you're in the woods with no internet? So we need to use the tap tempo function of life to figure out the tempo. We play the track in our external player or a streaming service or our phone or whatever and we tap the button on every beat of the track. I use an external player for this because if I play it in Ableton and while tapping the tempo, the grid is gonna change constantly and I won't be able to tap correctly the rhythm. So I'll play the track and I'll skip to a section where the drums have started. So once we figured out the ballpark BPM of the track, we round it to the nearest whole number, as producers usually set a round number as BPM in their DAW. So let's suppose this track is 96 BPM, so we set the tempo of uh, our Ableton project to 96. So now we go to the detail view of the audio clip, and now we activate the warp function, and as we can see, on the segment BPM box here, the clip has assumed the BPM of our project. Essentially, once we have the correct BPM entered in this box, our work is almost done and our track should be in sync. So let's check it with the metronome. I'll lower the volume of the audio clip so I can hear the metronome clearly. So it's not perfectly in sync because even though it's in the same tempo, it's not aligned to the grid. In order to achieve this, we need to find a moment in the track that we are sure is the first beat. So usually this is a kick drum. So I suppose it's this one. So let's zoom in a bit closer. So this gray thing here, it's called a transient marker. A transient marker is placed automatically by life, where it has detected that a new event is happening in the audio clip. So we right click on the transient marker that's on the first kick and we choose the option set 1.1.1 here. And that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. 
And there we have it, the track is perfectly synced to live's grid, so we can now cut loops out of it for sampling, use the whole track for our DJ sets, remix it or whatever. If there's a slight discrepancy between the track and live's grid, it would become more apparent towards the end, so let's check if it's still synced towards the end of the track. Yep, it's perfectly fine. And also I would recommend that you use the Complex or Complex Pro algorithm if you're gonna do drastic changes to the BPM as this will preserve the quality much better. So let's do the whole thing again with this Donna Washington track from 1981. It has live drums so the tempo isn't as steady and syncing the whole track would involve actually placing a lot of warp markers to correct the timing. Honestly I don't think there's much point in doing this as it would also mess up the drummer's groove. So I'll just to try to isolate a part and sync it so we, it can be a potential material for sampling or remixing. Ok so I'm gonna do the whole exercise again. hundred and nine BPM so round round it up to hundred and nine then I import the track onto the Ableton timeline activate the warp function and let me find the first kick uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh, yeah, yeah. so I'll set one point It synced in the beginning but starts drifting away and if you play it further down the track it's no longer synchronized and like I said this is because these are live drums and they're not as they don't have the steady tempo of a sequenced track so I'll just try to sync this the part between the fifth and the ninth bar so I just create a warp marker here I create one more here and I move it closer and so yeah so this part is now in sync change the mode to complex so yeah we can do this for the whole track and create more warp markers and synchronize the different sections to the BPM of the project but it's a lot of work in my opinion and uh, like I said it's gonna mess up with the drummer's groove so I'll just leave it like this and so what you can do with this part is you can actually select it create a new simpler and just drop it into simpler right click crop the sample and there you have it it's ready for remixing for chopping and uh, yeah so this was the whole process of cropping a track uh, in Ableton Live. I hope you find my method of doing it useful. Let me know if it works for you. I think it's a bulletproof method and works every time. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment, like the video if you really like it. And see you in the next video. Peace!